So what I want to do is spend a few minutes and go through asset stripping to trusts. And the first thing we're going to do is introduce this concept of the wealth and risk wall. And you can see this, this diagonal white line. On the left-hand side, we store wealth. And on the right-hand side, we, we carry risk. Okay, So you, you as individuals will always be on the right-hand side. You can't avoid risk. You will always carry it. Therefore, you store your assets on the left-hand side. And from a consultancy perspective, if you come to Gilligan Row, the first thing we'll do is we'll draw that line and draw where the assets are on the, on the wealth side of the wall or the risk side of the wall. And if your assets are on the risk side of the, side of the wall, we're going to be working out how we can drag them on uh, to the wealth side of the wall to protect them. Now, of course, in this very simple example, we've got a home that's worth $500,000. And to protect it, we could simply transfer it to the trust and say, trustees of this trust, that's now your asset. That's a gift. What, why can't we simply do that in New Zealand? What's the problem? Gift duty, exactly. So instead, what we do is enter into a gifting program to avoid this, this up to 25% uh, tax that arises on the transfer of the asset into the trust. So running you through it, the, the Smith Family Trust would be formed. Joe Smith would sell his home to the trust. The trust would say, hey, we've got to get some money from somewhere. We'll borrow it off Joe. So they acknowledge a debt back to Joe. And that transfers the asset to the trust. So now you've swapped the family home for a loan of $500,000 through to the trust. Does that make sense? And the issue here is that Joe has lent this $500,000 to the trust, and if he becomes a bankrupt, he hasn't actually achieved anything from an asset protection perspective. What is the official assignee, the person who bankrupts an individual, what are they going to do as soon as they step into Joe Smith's shoes if he's had a problem, and find that the trust owes him half a million dollars. What will they do? Call in the loan, exactly. So there are a few things that need to be done to address this problem. And the first one that's very obvious, and uh, law firms all over the country will do this as a standard practice, is they enter into a gifting program. $27,000 per annum per spouse. And of course, two spouses, $54,000 per annum. You get two gifts per year. Uh, sorry, you get two gifts in the first year, a gift today and a gift in 12 months' time. So for uh, a family, uh, two spouses, you're going to get $108,000 into a trust in the first year. And then 27000 per annum per spouse thereafter. And someone pointed out to me the other day, and I, uh, uh, with a wry smile, that of course the government's sending us a funny signal here, because there seems to be a tax incentive to have multiple spouses. So uh, but 27000 per spouse is the gifting program, and over time you erode the value of that loan. Now, if you're at $500,000 and you've gifted 108, the outstanding loan balance is 392. Make sense? If at that point Joe becomes a bankrupt and the house has gone up in value from 500 to 750, how much is the official SNE going to be calling up? 392. Who gets the 250? The, trust get, the trustees get it, don't they? Because the increase in value is inside the trust. And that's why assets on the wealth side of the wall become protected. So you make sure that the increase in value of assets is on the wealth side of the wall, put assets go up in value there, put uh, income earning assets into the trust. Don't put assets that lose money into the trust, like vehicles, for example. Okay, If you've got a vehicle that's going down in value, it's actually better for your gifting program to uh, have that vehicle in your name because you get poorer, which is your goal. Right, there's no point having a $100,000 Audi that you transfer to a trust, gift 27 grand of it, and next year it's only worth 60. You, you would have been better to keep it in your name, gift 27,000 of some other asset to the trust, and lose the $40,000 off the Audi in your own name. You got, you got poorer and quicker, which is your goal with trusts. Question. There's a, there's a question from an insolvency perspective. Uh, does not take five years to clear the gift. Uh, under the insolvency provisions, they can go back five years and void gifts uh, and any disposition of asset up to five years. The thing is that 
they do that during the period of insolvency. Gifts you make and assets you transfer during a period of insolvency that are in the ordinary course of business are okay. It's assets that you start fiddling with after you become insolvent. For example, after you've been given notice that you're going to be sued for something, those are the gifts and the asset transfers that get attacked under insolvency law. Make sense?